The Wisconsin Department of Health Services presents Interior Work Practices. This video will cover establishing interior containment, covering immovable objects, setting up signs, barriers, and flapped entry doors, final cleaning, visual inspection, cleaning verification, and bagging waste. These topics will be covered as if we are conducting work at a real job site from start to finish. The supplies needed include heavy-duty plastic sheeting, cutting tools, tape, orange cones, barrier tape and warning signs, tape measure, disposable tack pad, stapler, dowel, a half of vacuum, garden sprayer, wet wipes, flashlight, and your PPE. Establishing interior containment. Before you even start laying plastic, walk through your work area and turn off the HVAC system until the cleaning verification has been achieved. Close all doors and windows leading to or from the work area and tape the seams around each door and window casing with painter's tape. Close and cover all air and heat diffusers and intakes. And then, step one, you can cut plastic sheeting so that it covers all exposed surfaces within six feet of the components that will be affected by work. Here we'll be working on the water damage to the left side of the door and the spot on the ceiling. At this point, you should also lay down any runners that you plan on using for accessing the work area. This will keep workers from tracking debris on carpets and floors when walking out of the work area. Make sure all plastic is secured to the floor with tape. Covering or removing furniture. You should remove all furniture from the work area. Typically you can have the homeowner do this before you arrive. Removing all the furniture will save time and materials. However, if there are pieces of furniture that cannot be removed, they'll need to be properly covered using the method shown here. Step 1. Cut a piece of plastic large enough to cover the object and secure it with tape. Using painter's tape on the walls will prevent damage to the paint, while using duct tape to tape plastic to plastic will give it a secure seam. Everything within six feet of the surfaces that will be renovated, repaired, or painted needs to be removed or covered, including window treatments, furniture, and rugs. You can use painter's plastic on the immovable objects, but be sure to use heavy-duty plastic to cover the floors and to construct your T-door. Now that everything in the work area has been covered or removed, you'll want to stage your tools and any other equipment that will be used to conduct the renovation, repair, or painting work on the plastic sheeting within the work area. Bringing all the tools into the work area now will save from having to bring them through the flapped entry door, which we'll be putting up next. Here we'll be demonstrating a T-door, but a Z-door is also an option. Step 1, you'll want to cut the first piece of plastic slightly bigger than the door frame so that it can be completely adhered to the frame. Step 2, for exiting and entering the room, use duct tape to create a vertical line about the size of a man from floor to header in the middle of the plastic sheeting. Use duct tape horizontally at the top and the bottom of this line to reinforce the plastic after you've cut a slit into it. Use a cutting tool to cut down the middle of your duct tape Step 3, make a small S fold at the top of the plastic sheeting and tape it so that all layers are secured to the top of the door frame. Make a similar S fold at the bottom of the plastic sheeting and tape so that all layers are secured to the floor. Tape down both of the sides of the plastic as well so that that sheet of plastic is completely sealed to the door frame. The S folds will ensure that the plastic is not too tight and allow for people to move through it through the slit that you cut in the center vertical line created with duct tape. Step four, measure and cut a second sheet of plastic. This piece should be slightly shorter than the door frame so that it will hang down flat against the first piece of plastic. Tape it to the top of the door frame. Step five, Weigh the bottom of the second layer of plastic sheeting by taping a dowel rod to the bottom with duct tape. 
This creates a self-sealing flap over the doorway and over the opening that was cut into the first sheet of plastic. Once attached, the dowel should be situated about 3 inches off the floor. Decontamination area. Now you should hang warning signs to control your work area. Then you'll want to lay down a tack pad and a decontamination area. This will help keep dust and debris that may be on workers' shoes or boots from being tracked into non-work areas. Interior final cleaning. Once the work has been completed, your tools need to be removed from the work area before you can start cleaning. Vacuum off the tools with a HEPA vacuum or wipe them down with wet wipes. Using the plastic runners and tack pads, workers can take tools out of the work area. Step 1. The first step of interior cleaning is to wrap, seal, or bag all components and other materials or debris that has been created during the renovation work. Have a vacuum off the plastic and remove this waste from the work area and place in the appropriate waste containers. Step 2. Working top to bottom and from the innermost region of the work area towards the entry door, vacuum off the walls and plastic sheeting using a HEPA vacuum. You'll want to also HEPA vacuum yourself off at this point. Step 3. Mist the plastic sheeting and fold the dirty side inward when removing it. Either seal the edges of the folded plastic with tape or place it in a heavy duty plastic bag. This plastic needs to be disposed of and any garbage bags need to be properly goosenecked and sealed and then vacuumed off. Bagging waste. The proper method for bagging waste is as follows. First of all, be sure not to overfill the bag or you will not get a proper gooseneck. Gather the open end of the bag just below the neck and insert the HEPA vacuum. Use the vacuum to remove excess air from the bag. This will prevent the bag from popping during disposal. Remove the vacuum hose and twist the neck of the bag to form an 8 to 10 inch column. Fold the twisted column over on itself in a similar manner of how you would fold a hose over on itself to cut off the flow of water. Grasp the folded neck of the bag with one hand and wrap tape tightly around the folded neck to secure the fold in place. Now wrap the tape about two or three inches from the top of the fold several times so that the bag cannot come open and this should leave a nice loop handle at the top. Lastly then you'll want to use the HEPA vacuum to remove any dust and debris from the exterior of the bag. Continuing interior final cleaning. Step 4. Clean all surfaces within the work area and 2 feet beyond the work area until no dust or debris remains. Start cleaning at the top of the wall and work down to the floor. Have a vacuum or wet wipe the walls and other surfaces within the work area. Have a vacuum all remaining surfaces in the work area including furniture or fixtures. Use an upholstery brush attachment for the window surfaces and a crevice tool along the edges of walls. 
use a HEPA vacuum with a beater bar for carpeting, and make sure that you vacuum slowly and in two directions when vacuuming the carpet. Step 5. Wipe or mop all remaining surfaces and objects in the work area except for the carpeted and upholstered areas. Mop uncarpeted floors using a two bucket method or wet mopping. Mop stroke should be in a long S motion. Again, work from the end furthest from the work area entrance back to the entrance, making sure to never step back onto the areas that have already been cleaned. Step 6. After completion of the cleaning procedure, check your work. Conduct a careful visual inspection of the work area for visible dust and debris. If visible dust and debris is found, repeat the cleaning procedure. At this point, the T-door can be taken down, but the barriers and do not enter signs need to remain in place. Uncertified workers can look for dust and debris, but only a certified, lead-safe renovator can conduct the final visual inspection and the cleaning verification. Visual Inspection The PPE you should be wearing to conduct a visual inspection would include wearing boot covers. This is so that you do not track any dust or debris into the work area. Then you should turn on all the lights in the work area and bring a bright white light flashlight along with you to ensure adequate lighting. Step 1 then, systematically look at every horizontal surface in the work area. If you find dust or debris, re-clean the work area and repeat the visual inspection until it passes. Step 2, once you've carefully inspected all of the surfaces and have found no dust or debris, you may proceed to the cleaning verification procedure. Cleaning Verification as you enter the work area, put on clean disposable foot covers as well as non-latex gloves. This way you won't track any dust or debris into the work area. You need to conduct a cleaning verification for every windowsill and countertop within the work area. Each sill requires its own wipe, and each countertop can be wiped in its entirety unless it is over 40 square feet. Use a long-handled mop and wipe no more than 40 square feet per wipe. Compare each wipe to the cleaning verification. If your wipe is darker than the cleaning verification card, you need to re-clean that section. If the section fails again, you'll need to re-clean, wait one hour, and then use an electrostatically charged cleaning cloth to complete the cleaning process. If your first wipe is lighter or the same color as the cleaning verification card, the floor is considered clean. Once you've passed cleaning verification, you can take down any of the signs and critical barriers that you had left in place, and you can take up your decontamination area.